नमो थस भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो थस भगवत अर्हत सम्मास नमो थस भगवत अर्हत सम्मास Everyone, Saranai. Good evening, venerable Mahasangha, Sahales, and brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Today we are going to talk on the Dasana Thika, removable by insight triplet. It's a bit of a lengthy triplet. However, it's quite interesting and uh, one of the important triplets as well. So first we'll look at the three terms of the Dasana Thika. The first term, Dasanena Pahatabba Dhamma states that are removable by insight. The second, Bhavanaya Pahatabha Dhamma, states that are removable by cultivation. And Nevadasanena Na Bhavanaya Pahatabha Dhamma, states that are uh, removable by neither insight nor cultivation. Before we move on to the three terms, it's important to have an idea about the fetters or the sangyojana. So what are sangyojana? Sangyojana are unwholesome mental factors. These are the mental factors that bind beings to the round of existence. In other words, they are the ones that make us keep on being born uh, over and over again and keeps us going on in samsara. So, which are the states that are fetters? Katame Dhamma Sangyojana. There are 10 fetters. And as I mentioned before, these are mental factors. The first one, Kama Raga Sangyojana. That refers to sensual lust. As a mental factor, this represents Loba Chetasika or the mental factor of greed. Next, we have Patika Sangyojana, aversion. Or in other words, the mental factor uh, uh, dosa, dosa cheta sika. Then we have mana, conceit, titti, wrong views, vichikicha, doubt. Silabhata paramasa refers to attachment to rites and rituals. Now, this silabhata paramasa and ditti sangyojana, they are both two forms of. Ditti Chetasika or the mental factor of wrong views. Next we have Bhavaraga Sangyojana, attachment to existence. This is another form of Loba Chetasika. Next we have Issa, Envy, Macharyam, Avarice and Avijja, Ignorance. And all together these ten fetters translate to eight mental factors, eight unwholesome mental factors. Now, in this table, we have the same 10 fetters, but as I mentioned before, we have grouped them according to which mental factor they represent. So the first two, Kamaraga and Bhavaraga, are two forms of loba or greed, Chetasika and Ditti Sangyojanang and Silabhata Paramasa Sangyojanang, they are two forms of Ditti or wrong views. The rest are as they are and all together we get eight unwholesome mental factors. Yes, now let's look at the Lokuttara Chitta or the Supramundane Consciousness. What is a Supramundane Consciousness? The word Loka Uttara means a consciousness that pertains to the process of going beyond or transcending uttara, the word loka. And what is meant by loka? It, it, it means it, or it refers to the five aggregates of clinging, the pancha, upadana, kanda. So basically the whole process of understanding uh, what this five aggregates really are, seeing them as they are, uh, and in order uh, to do so, one needs to meditate, go through a process of vipassana bhavana, and finally liberate oneself from the sansara. So this whole process of transcending is carried out by this supramundane consciousness, the path consciousness in particular. 
So what happens in the process is that the consciousness is liberated from sansara. It will, uh, at the end, no longer be subject to birth and death. And that will be the cessation of suffering. So the supramundane consciousness are broadly categorized into two groups, magga and pala. And altogether, there are eight supramundane chittas. So now we're going to focus on the four magga chitta. The first is sotapati magga chitta, the path consciousness of stream entry. Second, we get sakadagami, that is the path consciousness of once returning. Next is anagami magga chitta, path consciousness of non-returning. And finally, arahatta magga chitta, the path consciousness of arahantship. So the supramundane magga chitta, the function of this, uh, if you compare the magga chitta and the pala chitta, they have two separate functions. The function of the magga chitta is basically to eradicate, permanently eradicate de defilements. And the fruition consciousness, on the other hand, its function is to experience to what degree the individual has been liberated from these defilements. So the magga chitta are wholesome consciousness and the fruition uh, or the pala chitta are vipaka or resultant consciousness. Now, the other important thing to note about all eight supramundane chittas is that it takes a common object, and that is Nibbana. So, considering these path consciousness, we must note that each path consciousness arises only once and lasts for just one chittakana or one mind moment. And it is never repeated again in the mental continuum of, a, of the individual who attains it. Now, why does this happen? So the path consciousness, as I mentioned, has a particular specific function, and that is to eliminate completely for good certain uh, fetters or sangyojana. And once they are eliminated, they will not arise again. Therefore, there is no need for that particular path consciousness to arise again, because once a certain uh, fetter or certain sangyojana has been eliminated. There is no need for that uh, function of elimination. It has already been done. That is why once the path consciousness performs its task, it will not arise again in that particular mental continuum or that individual who has attained it. Uh, the palachitta, the fruition consciousness on the other hand, can arise over and over again. Now, if you take the chitta viti, uh, I'm sorry, I'll show that in the next slide. So if you take a chitta viti, the pala chitta occurs soon after the magga chitta. And depending on the uh, whether the individual has keen or uh, average faculties, the number of palachitta will vary. So it will be two palachitta for someone with average faculties and it will be three palachitta for someone with uh, keen faculties. And again, if the person goes into palasamapati, and that is a form of absorption, it is, it is a form of jhana where they can stay in that uh, pala jhana for several mind moments. So that, again, is another difference between the path and the uh, fruition or the pala chitta. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, path and fruits are attained by a form of meditation, which is called development of insight or vipassana bhavana. And the whole idea of developing uh, this insight is to sharpen or strengthen the faculty of wisdom, panya. And through panya, one will be able to understand what the three characteristics, anicca, dukkha, and anatta. And once the insight gains its full maturity, that is when the individual will attain the uh, state of arahatta. 
where they have completely er eradicated all defilements. So coming back to the Dasana Thikka, we will now talk about the first term, Dasanena Pahatabba Dhamma, states that are removable by insight. So here in this triplet of Dasana or insight, by insight refers to by the path of the stream winner or stream, path of stream entry. Now, why is it called thus? So here, there's a nice example given. So let's try and understand it through this example. So now, if you look at the Chittavidhi, the attainment of path and fruit, we have two Chittavidhi given here. The first one is for uh, the one with average faculties, and the second one is for the one with keen faculties. And the differ difference here is, uh, the preparation or the parikama chitta that is given here is seen only in the one with average faculties, whereas the one with keen faculties will straight away commence with uh, access or upachara. So as a result, the average, uh, the one with average faculties will end up having two palachitta and the keen faculties one will have three palachitta in that chitta viti. Now we will focus on these four chitta, the preparation or parikama, access, upachara, conformity, conformity, anuloma and change of lineage, gotrabhu chitta. Parikama, upachara and anuloma. Those three take as its object the vipassana bhavana that that individual is doing. It could be either uh, anicca, dukkha or anatta. It would be pertaining to the meditation that that individual is carrying out. However, the change of lineage is the first chitta or the first mind that will take nibbana as its, as its object. And thereafter, the path or the Magga Chitta and the Pala Chitta, they will also take Nibbana as its object. Now here, the Gotrabhu or the change of lineage Chitta is the mind that gets the very first glimpse of Nibbana. However, in this Matika, in this triplet, it's, it's stated that it is the path of stream winner or the Sota Pati Magga Chitta, that is the first Chitta that sees Nibbana. Now, this is what we need to understand why it is called so. So, let's look at this example. So, this example comes from the Atta Salini. Now, let's say there is a man who goes to see the king. So, he goes with the intention of meeting the king. Uh, to carry on a certain business. So once he gets there, he sees the king from afar and the king is riding his elephant. But he somehow was unable to meet the king. So when someone asks him, did you see the king? He can't say yes, because although he saw the king from afar, he could not complete the task or he could not carry out the business in which he wanted to meet and discuss. So therefore, he would say, no. So he merely saw the king from afar, but the task was not completed. Similarly, the Gotrabhu Chitta only gets a glimpse of Nibbana. It does not carry out the task of eliminating the defilements, which uh, drives or diverts a person's mind towards the goal, which is towards Nibbana. So for that reason, the Sotapatti Magga Chitta is considered as the first Chitta that sees Nibbana in its true way. Yes, so the Magga Chitta has a special... Uh, 
set of mental factors. Those are the eight path factors. And what is, what is special about it is that it is only in the supramundane consciousness that you find all eight of these path factors arising together with one single consciousness. Now, if you take the mundane uh, chittas, the mundane wholesome chittas, you do see these uh, eight path factors, but you don't see them arising together. And the maximum uh, you can get arising together would be uh, six at any time. You won't see all eight arising together. Now here, why is it called Sotapati? The uh, Sotapati Magga Chitta. Sota refers to stream. And what is this stream? It is the noble eightfold path with, with its eight uh, path factors. And pati or apati, sota apati, that's how you get sota apati, is basically to enter this stream. And that is how we get this word sota apati. And why it, it is special? It is because once a person enters this state of sota apati, there is no turning back they will continue to flow or move towards Nibbana and they will not change their direction. And that is why it is important. And that is why it is given this name, stream enterer or the consciousness of stream entry. So again, now, as I mentioned before, these eight, uh, these factors of the eightfold path, they can arise in mundane, wholesome chittas. But of course, you won't see all eight arising together. And if you think of the destination, it is not fixed when it comes to the mundane, wholesome chittas. Whereas the path consciousness, whether it's uh, stream entry, sotapati, sakadagami, uh, anagami or arahatta, they are all they all have a fixed destination which is heading towards nibbana so that is what is special about this eightfold path so when it comes to the sotapatti magga chitta the one who reaches it will not turn back he will continue to walk on the path until he reaches the stage of arhatta Now we'll look at the different fetters or sangyojana that are eliminated by the path consciousness of stream entry or the sotapati magga chitta. So there are three sangyojana, sakkaya ditti, personality view or wrong view of self, vichikicha, doubt about the triple gem and uh, others. So basically there are eight different types of doubts which we will discuss later. And clinging to rites and ceremonies or rituals, see love with the paramasa, in the belief that they will lead to liberation. So basically, they are wrong forms of observations of rites and rituals. Now, the path consciousness has the function of permanently eradicating or eliminating these sangyojana. That is one uh, function of it. The other function is that it also cuts off or eliminates all the uh, loba dosa moha, the greed, hatred, and delusion that is strong enough to lead someone to a subhuman rebirth. So the guarantee that one gets by reaching the state of sotapatti is that they will never be born in a subhuman realm once they attain sotapatti. And the other key thing is that once a person reaches Sotapati, the maximum number of lives that they will be reborn again would be limited to a maximum of seven lives. And as I mentioned before, they will never be born in the apayas or the woeful planes of existence. 
Right. So now the Magga Chitta of Sotapati, the Sotapati Magga Chitta eliminates the first three fetters, which are uh, Sakayaditi, Vichikicha, and Sila, but the Paramas. So now these three are basically mental factors. And what we have to understand is that mental factors do not arise on their own. They always arise with a consciousness and other mental factors. So what is meant by eliminating these three fetters is that along with these three fetters are eliminated the uh, consciousness and the other mental factors that arise together with them. So as a result, we get five forms, five consciousness, five unwholesome chittas that are eliminated uh, completely eradicated and in such a way that they will not arise again in that stream of consciousness. And these are the four chittas rooted in greed associated with ditti or wrong view and the vichikicha chitta, the delusion uh, consciousness associated with doubt. Now these are the states that are Removable by insight, the dasanina pahatabba dhamma. So again, as I mentioned, we have two sets of dhammas that are being eliminated. One set is completely eliminated and the other set is partially eliminated. So first we'll take the uh, dhammas which are completely eliminated. So because we get uh, sakkaya ditti, vichikicha and silabhata paramasa, being eliminated completely, arising together with them, we get four consciousness rooted in greed associated with wrong view. The ditti sa the ditti gata sampayutta loba mula chitta. There are four of them. And we also get the vichikicha sahagata chitta, the consciousness accompanied by doubt, the moha chitta. Together with this arises 22 mental factors excluding mana, dosa, issa, machari, and kukucha. These are the states that are completely eliminated, which means that they will never arise in that stream of consciousness uh, in whom the state of sotapati has been attained. The next set are the dhammas which are partially eliminated. In other words, uh, the states of which the ability to give rise to subhuman rebirths are being cut off. These are the four consciousness rooted in greed, dissociated from wrong view. The ditti gata vipa yutta loba sahagata chitta. And two consciousness accompanied by displeasure, the two domanasa sahagata chitta, or the two dosa chitta. Altogether, there are six uh, chittas here. And together with them arises 25 mental factors, excluding Ditti and Vichikicha. Now, you know, there are 12 unwholesome or 12 Ahusala Chitta. Now, when you add all of these up, we get uh, five Chitta that are completely eliminated and six Chitta that are partially eliminated. Altogether, we get 11 Chitta. So what about the... Uh, the last one, the twelfth chitta, which is the Uddacha Sahagata Mohamula Chitta. One would wonder why that is not mentioned here. So the reason is uh, because the Uddacha uh, Mohamula Chitta is a very weak form of uh, consciousness. It does not result in a rebirth. Therefore, there is no... Uh, now, if you look at the definition of the second set, cuts off the ability of these states to give rise to subhuman rebirth. So it has to be a consciousness that can give rise to a subhuman rebirth. But the Uddhach Chitta does not have that ability, which is why it is not mentioned here. So we get a total of 11 Chittas uh, categorized under this term. Yes, now we move on to the summary section or the Nikkepa Khandan description of Dasanena Pahatabba Dhamma. 
Kathame Dhamma Dasanena Paha Tapa, which are the states that are removable by insight. Tini Sanyojanani, the three fetters, Sakkaya Ditti, wrong view of self. It's also called theory of individuality or personality view. Vichikicha, doubt, and Silabhata Paramasu, clinging to rites and ceremonies in the belief that they can lead to liberation. So Sakkaya Ditti, what is Sakkaya Ditti? It is a wrong view pertaining to self. So basically, uh, the fivefold aggregate or the Pancha Upadana Kanda, the Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana, these five aggregates are subject to clinging, which is why we call it Pancha Upadana Kanda. And this clinging happens in terms of a certain view that we take in respect to the body and the other four mental aggregates. And this wrong view takes uh, is basically 20-fold. And we will talk about this 20-fold Sakkaya Ditti uh, in the next couple of slides. But basically what you need to understand is Sakkaya Ditti is the wrong view that we take in with respect to the body and the other four aggregates. It's the Pancha Upadana Kanda. And then when it comes to Silabhata Paramasu, Silabhata Paramasu are the wrong observances. So basically, if a person performs a certain rite or a ritual, thinking that it will purify or cleanse one of one's defilements. And if it's a wrong form of observance, then that is called Silabhata Paramasu. For example, if a person uh, does a lot of unwholesome deeds and then prays to God and say, may all of my defilements or may all of my bad come go away. So that would be a wrong observance because once you perform an Akusala Kama, you can't just undo it. You can't uh, expect it to be undone or expect the results of it not to happen. So likewise, there are various uh, rites and rituals which are wrong and which we uh, may be observing uh, with the intention of uh, purifying ourselves or leading uh, ourselves towards um, a state of deliverance. Now, this is the Nikkepa Kandang summary section description of uh, Sakkaya Ditti. Tatta Katama Sakkaya Ditti. What is wrong view of self? Ida Asutava Putujjano. When in this world, the ignorant average man who, Aryana Adasavi, perceives not the noble ones. Arya Dhammasa Akovido, who comprehends not. Arya Dhamme Avinito, nor is trained according to the doctrine of the noble ones. Sappurisana Adasavi, who perceives not good men. Sappurisa Dhammasa Akovido, who comprehends not. Sappurisa Dhamme Avinito, nor is trained according to the doctrine of good men. Now the Atta Salini gives a word by word definition of each of these terms. So let's look at them. So first we'll take the word either, which is the first word of this second sentence, which means here. Now, the word either has many meanings depending on the context in which it is used. Sometimes it refers to the world. So, in places where uh, Lord Buddha mentions, here in the world the Tathagata appears, this is with reference to the world. Sometimes it's referred, it's with reference to the sasana, the dispension or the religion. Uh, and that is in places like, uh, I can read the Pali, let me just grab it. Yeah, so the first one, Ida Tathagato Loke Upajan, Upajan, Upajati. So that is 
in the sense Ida would be with reference to the world. Ideva bikavo saman samane ida duti dutiyo samane. So in those sen sentences, it's with reference to uh, the sasana. And then again, in some places, it is uh, mentioned as a place or a space, akasa. Sometimes it's used just to fill up a half sentence, padapurana. But here in uh, this context, what we are using is the meaning we are using is the word. Now we will see what the word asutava putujjano means. Asutava means ignorant and putujjano refers to average man or common man. Now, what is the meaning of ignorant? Why is this person called ignorant? It is because there is absence of accept, access to scriptures and of the higher attainments of the Magga and Pala. So if one is uh, does not encounter the Dhamma, uh, does not come into the uh, contact of the noble ones and the, the noble Dhamma, then that person will be an ignorant person because they will not know anything about uh, what is taught in this Dhamma and how to, and that exists higher attainments and also how to reach these higher attainments. So they will not know what is Kanda, Dhatu, Ayatana, uh, what is the causal mode, the Pachyakara, or what is the application of mindfulness, Satipattana. Thus, they will not attain any higher forms of attainment. The Magga and Pala will be lost to such a person. So that is the kind of person who is referred to here as ignorant. The Asutava Putujjanu. Now we will look at the different characteristics of this ignorant Asutava Putujjanu. He produces many corruptions. In other words, he... Uh, he in, he does or his mind uh, produces a lot of unwholesome mental factors. They have many views of individuality unremoved. This is with reference to sakkaya ditti, the wrong view of self. So they will have those views about the wrong views about their self. They look to the face of many teachers. Now, what does this mean? This means that they keep changing their faith. Now, uh, a sutava putujjana, a person who is not ignorant, a person who is wise, will know that the Buddha's teaching is the path that will lead to liberation. And they will not seek elsewhere. They will not uh, look towards the teachings of other teachers. They will be, uh, their faith will be unshaken. So, here, the Asutava Putujjana, they will not have such a strong faith. So they will keep changing uh, their teachers and they'll be, they keep, they'll be looking for different teachings elsewhere. They have not got clear of all tendencies. Tendencies are gati or habits. So they will uh, per, uh, continue to have uh, tendencies or gati, which are unwholesome. They construct many and various complexities. Again, uh, and they are uh, born along by many and various floods. They are anxious with many and various anxieties. Again, all these three are with reference to the various different forms of unwholesome uh, mental factors or the corruptions which are given various names. They, they keep generating those unwholesome uh, mental factors or uh, chitta chetta sikha. So this is the description of a ignorant or asutava uh, putujjana. Yes, and the last characteristic of the asutava putujjana is that they burn with many and various heartburns. Now this is with reference to the uh, the sensual desires, the many desires that they have. And all of these uh, description given here are 
with relation in re in relation to the sensual desires that these individuals burn with. Now, the next thing about this putujjana, there are two different forms of putujjana. One is blind, and it's called uh, the ando putujjana. Ando means blind, and the other is called good at heart, kalyanako putujjana. Now, here the kind of uh, asutava putujjana is uh, basically the blind one, the blind putujjana, the under putujjana. So here we spoke about the under putujjana. The next phrase that we came across was Aryana Adasavi, who perceives not the Aryans. Now earlier we spoke of a putujjana. Putujjana is an average man or a common man. Aryans are uh, separate. They are of a higher uh, intellect. And if you compare the average man and the Aryans, basically they will not mix. They are completely two different entities. Aryans are those who have eliminated all the defilements and they are of a much superior uh, level of consciousness. Whereas the average man, they are prone to develop various corruptions which is why we say that the Aryans and the uh, Putujjano, that they do not mix together. Now, who is Arya? Now, again, we have several defini definitions for the word Arya. One is from being far, from corruptions or Ara. So because they have completely eliminated all the defilements, they are very far from corruptions. Therefore, they are called Arya. Next, not urging the world to behave in an unbeneficial way and urging them to be behave in a beneficial way. That is another uh, definition of Arya. Worthy of uh, praise, worthy of gifts, worthy of worship by the world of men and devas. And who are they? These are the, Buddha, the Samma Sam Buddhas, the Pacheka Buddhas, or the Silent Buddhas, and Buddha's disciples. They are who we call Arya. In some contexts, only the Buddha is called Arya. And uh, in sentences like uh, because in the world of men and devas, the Tathagata is the Aryan. In, in instances like that, the word Arya is with reference only to the Samma Sambuddha or the Tathagata. But generally, when you hear the word Arya, it refers to the Samma Sambuddhas, the Pacheka Buddhas and Buddha's disciples. Next, we come to another term, Sappurisa. Sappurisa refers to good men. Again, Sappurisa are the same, the Tathagata, uh, Sammasam Buddha, the Pacheka Buddhas, or the Silent Buddhas, and Buddha's disciples. So, yes. Sappurisa and Arya are similar. Now, let us look at the characteristics of a Sappurisa, or a good man. He is of a grateful heart. The Pali term given is Katanyu, uh, katanyu Katavedi. Of cultured mind, of a developed mind, firm in devotion, and a virtuous friend, Kalyana Mitta, who carefully tends to the many needs of those that are in need. So if there's anyone who is in trouble, who requires assistance, then they will always come to that person's assistance. These are the characteristics of a sappurisa or a good person. And now uh, what we come to next is Aryana Adasavi. Now we know who an Arya person is, a noble person is. 
Next, we come to the phrase Ariyana Adasavi, he who does not perceive uh, the noble ones. Now, there are two ways of perceiving. One, we can directly visualize using our eye. The other way is perceiving through insight. Now, what is meant here is perceiving through insight. Now, for example, if you uh, now, when if Lord Buddha is walking down the street and there is a dog or a jackal or a cat, some animal who sees Lord Buddha, they see Lord Buddha through their eyes, but they do not perceive Lord Buddha. Here, the word perception or seeing is with reference to seeing with insight. So to understand this better, uh, there are two examples given in the Arthasalini. The first one is uh, about an old man who uh, became a monk in his old age and he became the supporter or the assistant of an uh, elder, a monk, who was not just an ordinary monk, but he was an arahant. So one day while they were walking on their arms round, uh, this uh, old monk was carrying the uh, elder monk's uh, robes and begging bowl. He asked the question. He asked, sir, what are the Ary Aryans like? And then the elder monk says, friend, even though in this sasana, an old man goes about together with the Aryans, taking their bowl and robe, and does the great and lesser duties towards them, he does not know them. Friend, Aryans are difficult to know. Now, though these words were spoken by this elder monk, that old monk did not understand what he meant. So he didn't understand that he was in the company of a Arahant. So likewise, it is very difficult to know who an Arya Puggala is, uh, because they don't walk around with a label saying, I am an Arahant, or I am a uh, Sotapati or Sakadagami, Anagami person. They keep it to themselves. But through their behavior, through their qualities, one may be able to guess, but it, it is very difficult to know. Another example uh, is where Lord Buddha uh, was speaking to another monk called Vakkali. And here Lord Buddha says, Yoko uh, Vakkali Dhammang Pasati So Mang Pasati. Which means, uh, he says that uh, one must see uh, the Lord Buddha not through the eye, as in uh, the... Um, the eye that we see things with, but through insight, through seeing the Dhamma. So Lord Buddha says, Vakkali, he who sees the law sees me. Or in other words, he who, he who sees the Dhamma sees me. So what we need to understand is Aryanan Adasavi. That phrase refers to not perceiving the noble ones through insight. Arya Dhammasa Akovido, who comprehends not the Aryan doctrines, is unskilled in the Aryan doctrines such as the different kinds of application of mindfulness. That's the Satipatta. Arya Dhamme Avinito, who is not trained according to the Aryan doctrines. Now here the word Avinito comes from uh, vinita. It's the negative of vinita. Vinita is to be trained and being untrained is avinita. So it comes from the word vinayo. Vinayo refers to discipline. Now here the word vinaya or discipline is twofold. One is discipline of restraint, sangvara vinayo. The other is discipline of elimination, pahana vinayo. Each of these, that is the Sangvara Vinayo and the Pahana Vinayo, again becomes fivefold. And we'll take them one by one. So, first, 
uh, we will look at the discipline of restraint, the Sangvara Vinaya, and see what they are. The first is Sila Sangvara, restrained by virtue. Next, we have Sati Sangvaro, mindfulness. Jnana Sangvaro, insight. Kanti Sangvaro, patience. And Virya Sangvaro, effort. The Pahana Vinaya, Discipline of elimination, again, is fivefold. We have Thadanga Pahana, elimination of the factor in question. Vikambana Pahana, discarding. Samucheda Pahana, extirpating. Patipasaddi Pahana, composure. And Nisarana Pahana, escape. Now we'll take the Sangvara video and try to understand what they are. So the first one, Sila Sangvara, restrained by virtue, is with reference to the Pati Mukha, Pati Mukha Sila. With these, one is filled, replete, endowed with the Pati Mukha restraint. This is with reference to the Vinaya Pitaka. So all the rules, the code of conduct laid down in the Vinaya Pitaka is referred to as the Pati Mukha. And this is what is uh, referred to here as Sila Sangvaru or restraint by virtue. All those, uh, the code of conduct. Then we have Sati Sangvaru. One guards the eye-controlling faculty, arrives at restraint in the sight-controlling faculty. This is the restraint by mindfulness. So Sati Sangvaro re refers to basically controlling uh, how we look at various or take on various objects that come to the five sense doors. So if we see an object, we have a tendency of uh, generating either aversion or craving towards it. But through mindfulness, we can develop an ability or a restraint uh, to prevent that from happening or at least to lessen that uh, tendency of developing craving and aversion. So that is called Sati Sangvaro or restraint by mindfulness. So we spoke about Sila Sangvaro and Sati Sangvaro. Now let's look at the remaining uh, Sangvara. So here we have uh, restrained by insight, Jnana Sangvaro. And here Lord Buddha mentions, uh, so basically the currents flowing in the world. So there are a lot of defilements that arise in the mind. So how can we get rid of them. It is through mindfulness. So we can check these defilements or these unwholesome uh, minds and mental factors from arising through mindfulness and through insight, we can completely eradicate them. And this is what is referred to as restraint by insight or jnana sangvaro. So we are utilizing insight or jnana or panya to eradicate or eliminate defilements. Next we have Kanti Sangvaru. Kanti Sangvaru refers to restraint by patience and what is meant by patience here is endurance of various uh, physical things like cold, heat and then uh, various insects they come and bite. So when one sits down to meditate they encounter various different forms of uh, hindrances or uh, things that will uh, make it difficult for them to continue with their meditation. This is when uh, one would require patience or kanti. So enduring these physical uh, issues like cold, heat or insect bites, that is called kanti sangvaro. Next we have restraint by effort, virya sangvaro not consenting to the up prison lustful thought. So sometimes, now for instance, when you sit down to meditate, you get all kinds of thoughts that flow in, which 
prevents you from continuing with that meditation. So you keep getting all kinds of, it may be uh, desires, it could be uh, aversions, various different uh, thoughts that will prevent you from uh, completing your task of meditation. So here we need to put an effort, virya, in order to suppress this. So that is called virya sangvara. So these are the five different types of sangvara vinaya. So we'll talk about the five-fold uh, pahana sangvaro next week because uh, we don't have much time to talk about them today. So I'm going to leave you with an exercise. We spoke about the Samyojana Dhamma. I want you to categorize them into uh, according to the Kanda, Ayatana, Dhatu and Arya Satcha.那老师说呢我们谈过了这个防护率我们还有呢这个舍断率呢没有还没有谈但是呢这个呢会到下一个下一堂课因为呢今天呢时间也不早了所以呢我们就留到下一次呢才谈这个这个舍断率的内容那在